I want to minister on friendship with the Holy Spirit. It was an amazing time in my life when I learned that the Holy Spirit wasn't a force or a feeling, but that he could be a friend. The Holy Spirit's power in your life is the key to true and full Christian living. The power of the Holy Spirit will cause you to evangelize with boldness, to resist the power of temptation with strength, Some of you struggling with secret sin, habits that you're trying to overcome, and it feels like a battle that you can't win. When you learn to surrender to the Holy Spirit, it ceases to be a battle and it becomes a victory. Because the Holy Spirit can do such a deep work in your heart that you'll go from being frustrated over your sin and temptation, you'll go from struggling with certain desires to the point where that doesn't even become a desire in your heart anymore. He doesn't just change your behavior. He changes your nature, your desire, and your heart. The Holy Spirit is the key to understanding the word, not just to the point of information, but revelation. And revelation is knowledge set on fire by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit in your life, a precious friend, daily companion and comforter, he is the key to praying into the depths of God. He is the key to sincere worship that opens the floodgates of heaven. He is the key to not you following signs, but signs following you. He is the key to knowing Jesus in greater depths than you've ever known him before. That's friendship with the Holy Spirit. And I want to show you tonight how to cultivate that. Do you want that? Yes. And I want you to lift your hands and tell the Lord, I want that. that. You in the comment section, watching live or on the replay, write those simple words, make it public. I want that. I want that friendship with the Holy Spirit in my life to not just be there, but to grow. And here's the wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit wants a friendship with you more than you want a friendship with him. Why is that? It's because... There are certain aspects of your own nature that resist him. The Bible tells us clearly that the flesh resists the spirit. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, that we are to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, when I first learned this truth, it was... A major revelation. It was a turning point. A turning point. Like I say, there's that timeline of your spiritual journey. And along that timeline, there will be key markers, key moments. One of those for me was when I learned that the Holy Spirit was my companion and my friend. And this was major for me because I had the tendency to fall into legalism. Now, people often misunderstand what legalism is and I think it's become just kind of an insult that Christians use to tell people who are telling them they can't sin to basically keep their opinions to themselves. And often we confuse legalism for holiness and holiness for legalism. But being religious, being legalistic does not mean I insist on holiness. That just, that means being a Christian. Legalism is the attempt to connect with God or to earn salvation based upon your own works. And legalism can only result in one of two things. Either legalism will result in spiritual pride. The individual will think, I'm doing a good job. I'm earning this. I'm really, I'm really making this connection strong with the Lord. And then they begin to take pride in their own spiritual experience. Their faith is not in Jesus, but in their ability to pray. Their faith is not in Jesus, but in their knowledge of the word. And that produces that religious pride that ultimately keeps them from walking in the fullness of the Christian life. On the other side, legalism produces despair. Because when you come to the realization that you can't do anything to earn what God wants to give you, well, then you just throw up your hands and give up. This is why I think it's important that we teach the truth about how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. Because it is the law that gives power to sin. 
And I think we have this reversed because sometimes we tell people things like, oh, the Holy Spirit will do a work in you. The Holy Spirit will help you walk in holiness. The Holy Spirit will keep you clean. And then we become nervous with language like that because we think that the implication, therefore, is that the person doesn't have to do anything. No, what I'm saying is that we can't do anything until we first understand that the work is the Holy Spirit's. And when I come into that proper perspective, then I become liberated from sin. Tell someone they have to do it all their own. Watch them become discouraged, throw up their hands and say, I'm not even going to try because at least I'm not miserable being fully surrendered to the world. And that is surrender to the Holy Spirit, letting him work in you. That's where I was, stuck in that legalistic mindset, going back and forth between the extremes of liberalism, not, not in the political sense. I'm talking about this idea that I can kind of just live how I want and I don't really need to pray, I don't really need to read the word, I don't really need to implement spiritual disciplines and everything will work out. That's, that's liberalism. And on the other side, there was that legalism. And I would just go back and forth between these two extremes, not knowing where my place was, wondering about my call, wondering about my future. I knew scripture. I attended church. I was a born-again believer. But something, 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 I don't want to use the, the phrase something was missing, but something was out of order. You see, because the Bible makes it clear in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, that you cannot be a born-again believer without the Holy Spirit. And that if you have the Holy Spirit, then you belong to God. It's a misconception to think that I can be saved and then later receive the Holy Spirit. I understand in the book of Acts we see a particular story where the believers said something to the effect of, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. But even though they hadn't heard of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit was still present in their life and the salvation within. Now, I came to this place. I knew Jesus. And I'm not saying Christ plus. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I have to be very careful about this. Again, nothing was missing, but there was something out of order. Nothing was missing because I was a born-again believer. And when you're born again, God is fully committed. And he puts his Holy Spirit within you. God does not send a baby Holy Spirit, a new convert Holy Spirit, or a portion of the Holy Spirit. When God sends forth his spirit, he sends forth the same Holy Spirit in fullness and in power, the very same who rested on Christ. That's the Holy Spirit who dwells in me and you. You have that. He's in you. But it doesn't always feel that way, does it? Isn't it interesting that we know the truth that we're spirit-filled but sometimes it feels like we're empty. We know the truth about the power that the Holy Ghost brings upon a life, but sometimes it feels like we're exhausted. We know the truth about how we are the righteousness of God in Christ, yet sometimes it feels like we're hypocrites. We know the truth about how we have a perfect connection with God himself, yet sometimes it feels like he's a million miles away. What do you do when what you feel doesn't line up with what you read in the Word? What do you do when your life as you know it doesn't seem to reflect what you see in Scripture? Now, if we want to go to some extremes, it's possible that an individual who's experiencing these things hasn't really experienced salvation. But more often than not, at least in the cases that I've seen personally dealing with individuals on a day-to-day -day basis, more often than not, it's that they haven't learned how to surrender to the Holy Spirit. We pray things like, God, I need more of you. How's that possible? God, I want to draw, I want to draw closer to you. H how can God get any closer than within you? And then we see our Christianity in terms of performance. You view it like a ladder that you climb. When I'm doing good, I read my Bible, that's another step up the ladder. When I pray, it's another step up the ladder. 
When I go to church on Sunday, another step of the ladder. Oh, but I missed prayer on Tuesday. I go down three. We compile these lists of things that we think we have to do to connect with God. And I'm not saying we don't have Christian duties. I'm not saying we shouldn't live spiritual and disciplined lives. I'm not saying that we shouldn't live holy. I'm saying that we don't do these things to connect with God. We do these things from connection with God. Now, I began to learn about this person of the Holy Spirit. You have to picture this because I grew up in church. I, I went to a private Baptist school. Those Baptists will have you memorizing scripture. That's why I often joke, I think I'm too Baptist for my charismatic friends, and I'm way too charismatic for my Baptist friends. People don't know where to put me categorically, but that's okay. I, I'm okay with that. But, you know, I'd memorize vast amounts of scripture, like we would have to write, you know, Psalm 119 over and over again, memorize chapters at a time, and I'm not saying that, you know, there's nobody who does it better than that, but that was my experience. And so I remember standing in church services during the worship. I, I loved Jesus. I was worshiping him. It was a, a true connection. Again, I'm not saying you're not saved if you're not experiencing all of these things I'm talking about. Please understand we're talking about deeper things now. But I would stand in these services and I would say, God, there has to be more. Everything within me knew that I wasn't quite walking in the fullness of what God had for me. I'm not saying God withholds from us. I'm saying that sometimes you and I withhold from him. I'm not saying we need more of God. I'm saying you need to surrender more of you. I'm not saying there's more power or gifts or love or anything that the Spirit has to offer that we don't have. Everything that God has, everything he desires for you, he's already given to you. The question is, what are you doing with what he gave to you? And I knew this. Something deep within was stirring in me, the Holy Spirit driving me into the depths of God, pushing me for more. Calling me to higher consecration. And I don't know about you or if you've ever felt anything like that. But I would stand there and worship. And, and I remember worshiping with such intensity, my hands would begin to cramp. I remember praying with such intensity that my face would have carpet marks on it. My, my, my carpet would be soaked with tears. My whole body would tense. And it wasn't until I learned this, this truth, that the Holy Spirit is near to me, that I began to see the transformation. So how did this come about? Well, first of all, you do have to acknowledge that he's a person. He is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And once you come to know this, that he's near to you, that he's walking with you, that he's your companion from day to day, it changes everything. Again, in my religious mindset, I often wondered, Holy Spirit, is, is it okay if I talk to you? I honestly thought at that point that I was committing some type of misdemeanor idolatry. Felt uncomfortable to me at first. Can I talk to the Holy Spirit? And it changed the way I thought about God and it changed the way I thought about distance between God and I. Again, we picture God like he's a million miles away. And that if we perform well enough, he'll look in our direction. My friend, here's something that changed the way I thought about it. And it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's true. Even in your worst moments, he does not look away.
Even in your worst moments, he does not step back. That is one of the greatest misunderstandings of our day. But think about how that contradicts everything we know about the word. People ask me in fear often, Brother David, if I make a mistake, will the Holy Spirit leave me? You want to know one of the great signs that you believe in a works-based gospel? You want to know one of the great signs that you're under the power of a legalistic mindset of religious spirit? Is if you live in the constant fear of losing your salvation. Now, some don't like what I said there, but I'm telling you that's the truth. Because what do people, what's the instant reaction? Brother David, don't tell them that. Because then they'll go on sinning. Wait a minute. If they're truly saved, they'll have no desire to. And by that, I mean that they fight that desire of the sin nature. And it's an understanding that closeness with him. It's an understanding that, that he doesn't abandon me in my worst moments. That really begins to liberate you. Not to continue in your sin. Because think about this. Why would God remove from you the only power you have at living holy as a punishment for not being holy? You made a sinful mistake. That's it. Your punishment. I'm going to take from you your power to resist future sinful mistakes. Now, let me be clear here so nobody hears what I'm not saying. I'm not saying go on sinning. I'm not saying live however you want. If you do that, I doubt you met Jesus in the first place. But I am saying that there is a security in knowing that he's faithful. So number one, friendship with the Holy Spirit, how to cultivate this. Number one is awareness. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 tells us that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Really think about this, guys. <laughs> I think we imagine that the physical body is evil unto itself. As if these physical beings are wicked things. They're decaying, they're dying. God help us, they're getting older. I'm only 33, but even still, I look back at pictures from like five years ago. I'm like, oh my, what's happening? And I say, I wish, I wish I could look the way I did the first time I thought I looked old. That's a reality. The body's decaying. These mortal bodies, they're dying. But this physical body is not sinful unto itself. It's a vehicle. You choose how you use the body that God gave you. But the Bible tells us that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Something in this season the Holy Spirit has really been reminding me of. He's good at that, you know. You ever gone through a season of life where it just seemed like the life was draining from you and out of nowhere you get this breath of fresh spiritual air? That's just the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. You're like, I didn't do anything to earn this. I, I didn't increase my prayer. I didn't increase my devotion to the Word. I didn't increase my fasting. The Holy Spirit just came alongside me and breathed fresh on me. He doesn't leave you to yourself. But something in this season the Holy Spirit has been really reminding me of. And I just, I'm going to say this and it's going to sound so simple. And that's what's so frustrating about the deeper spiritual truths is they sound so simple. See, often people confuse strangeness for depth. You know, there's eight glory portals when you pray, and if you say a key word at each entry of the glory portal, it coincides with something of the symbolism of the tabernacle at Rosh Hashanah. And if you look at the calendar on the... And it's like, okay, that all may be true, but how on earth does any of that apply to my life? And some people are so deep they're drowning. And I understand there's truth to that. I'm not mocking the idea of symbolism. I have a whole book on it. But, but you know, 
I think sometimes we think that's death. Or, you know, I went to the third heaven, and I spoke to an angel, his name was this, and he showed me this room and that room. Wonderful testimonies, but those are testimonies. What is depth? Depth is simplicity. True spirituality is simplicity. Don't confuse strangeness for depth. It's good to be a little strange sometimes, but don't confuse it for depth. Of all the great teachings and doctrines of Scripture, we could go over doctrines of salvation, doctrines of the end times. You know the greatest truth that's revealed in all of Scripture? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Simple. So the Holy Spirit's been bringing me back to simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. And he's just been reminding me, and again, I'll say this, and it's going to sound simple, but, but it, it's true, and we need to really grasp it. He's been telling me, I'm, I'm right next to you. Like, I'm right there. And we go through so many things. We face so many challenges. Asking questions. Wondering about this or that. My friend, stop imagining as if God is off in the distance and that to get to him you must go through the cosmos and that to go through the cosmos you must perform with perfection. Reach out your hand. He's right there. Like, like your hand to your face. He never stops looking at you. He never stops looking at you. When you're stressing out at work and you've completely forgotten about him, he doesn't stop looking at you. When you're doing those things you know you ought not to do and you'd rather not acknowledge him, he's still looking at you and he's listening to you. In moments of achievement and defeat, while you're awake and even when you sleep, he's looking at you. He's watching over you. Why? You're the apple of his eye. You are the apple of his eye. And and, and we, 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 we imagine that God has his arms folded and that he says something like, I love you, I just don't like you. <laughs> or, I love you, I'm here, but one more, you're that close. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't just watch you. He watches over you with joy. I'm just now beginning to understand this. I used to think that uh, parental analogies were just cliche when it came to sermons, partly because I was always in those analogies. My dad's a pastor. If you're a pastor's kid, you know how you slump into your seat when he starts telling stories, hoping you're not in the illustration. But you know, I tell Aria all the time, my daughter, because she's learning now to manage her emotions. There's some days where she's just not having it. Parents, you, sit, you can say amen right there. People, oh, they're such angels. You know, maybe a fallen angel sometimes. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's sweet. But on some days, you know, just screaming her head off, angry. And, and, and it's never anything important. It's always something like, you know, the bear, I lost his shoes or something random like that. And I'm, te I'm teaching her, all right, all right, you can be mad, that's okay. And I ask her, you fill it in here, right in here, you fill that, you're mad? She goes, yes, I'm mad, that's okay. Said, that's okay, you can be mad, that's okay. You just can't scream at mom. You can't throw things. You can be mad, that's okay. You can be sad. And I tell her this, and, 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 and as I'm telling her, I want her, to, I, 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 I pray she understands this more than almost anything I'm teaching her. I tell her, Aria. I love you when you're happy, and I love you when you're sad. I love you when you're in trouble. I love you when you're mad. I love you when you're awake and when you're asleep. 
and, and she's listening. I can see her listening. It's trying to process it. You love me when I'm mad? You love me when I'm in trouble? It doesn't feel like it when I'm on timeout. Simplicity. He loves you when you're happy. He loves you when you're sad. He loves you when you're in trouble. He loves you when you're mad. And that nearness, that acknowledgement of his closeness, as simple as it is, that is truly life transforming. That's one of the keys to friendship with the Holy Spirit is knowing that he's near. You know how, how much heartache I've saved myself in praying from that faith? Jesus said, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, not God, please hear me. I think sometimes we're screaming at him, hear me, please. He said, I'm listening. <laughs> God, are you there? I'm right here. <laughs> That's how I used to pray. Why? Legalism. And I thought, oh, surely he doesn't hear me today because I missed two days of prayer. Or surely he doesn't hear me today because I didn't read enough scripture. Or I messed up. Or, or I, I'm not as spiritual as I should be. That is performance-based. That would be to see him as a force or a feeling. Because your feelings come and go. He doesn't. The scripture declares he is faithful even when we are not. For he cannot deny who he is. That's number one, awareness, mindfulness. Number two is dependency, involvement. Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine. That will ruin your lives. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That phrase in the original language, be filled, it's, an, it's implying a continuation. Don't think Water in a glass, think wind in a sail. A continual filling, a continual breathing of the Holy Spirit upon a life. Here's the problem. Every single one of us want to depend upon the Holy Spirit. There are no true believers who say, God, I want to do this without you. God, I want to do this my own way. God, I don't want you involved in anything. Nobody says that. And so... Anyone who is living a life of unhealthy self-reliance, anyone who is living a life in their own strength and power is doing so without knowing it. Well, all the time, oh man, you know, ah, serving God is just, just so hard and difficult. And one trial after another, I can't catch a break. And I'm thinking, okay, I hear you, and I'm not trying to be dismissive of people's trials. I mean, we all face trials. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Trials are a part of life. Tragedy is a part of life. But some of us heap unnecessary trials on ourselves because of our lack of prayer. You see, when you go a day without prayer... You're pointing your finger in the Holy Spirit's face and saying, I can do this without you today. When you go a week without prayer, you're saying, God, I can live this week in my own strength. When you live a lifestyle of prayerlessness, it's a signal to God that you think you can live on your own strength. Now, no believer wants to live a life that's not dependent upon the Holy Spirit. But we must learn to involve him through those spiritual disciplines that are so often neglected. Prayer is a demonstration of your dependency on God. And that's just one form of dependency. I mean, for example, and I'm just giving some examples now to illustrate this concept of dependency upon the Holy Spirit. My heart is broken over the state of some segments of the church. And when I say some segments, please understand I'm not generalizing the whole church as a whole because we could all criticize, but it does no good if you're only criticizing without presenting solutions. That's just complaining. That's not preaching. 
Some people, they, they just love to bash the bride of Christ. The church is this, the church is that. And yeah, it sounds exciting because it's mean, but that's not always the truth. So I'm not, I'm not talking about that whole side of things, but there is something to be said of looking at ourselves and saying, okay, we have to assess some of these problems and then correct these problems. I, 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 I'm heartbroken. I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken over the idea that so many ministries are doing things based on man's ability and not the Spirit's. And I had a conversation with the pastor one time. He tells me, you can come preach for me. And I want to lay down some ground rules. He had this whole list. He said, don't do any of those Diga things. I said, what are Diga things? People falling on the floor. <laughs> People speaking. I said, those aren't Diga things. You know, I'm, th- these came from, from the move of the Spirit. But I'm not saying that these are necessarily central to our faith. But I'm sitting there with this pastor, and he's rationalizing right in front of me, rationalizing away, surrendering to the Spirit. He says, you know, people get saved in our church, don't they? I said, yes, they do. He says, okay, so the Holy Spirit's working, isn't he? Yes, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, marriages are restored in our church. That's probably true, yeah. He said, well, isn't that a work of the Holy Spirit? I said, yeah, that's a work of the Holy Spirit. He said, and lives are transformed. People, people who were drug addicted, no longer drug addicted. Isn't that a work of the Holy Spirit? I said, yes, that's, that's a work of the Holy Spirit. And I left that meeting, and I, was, I, was, I just couldn't quite put my finger on why that, that didn't, that didn't uh, compute, if you will. And then I realized something. Some Christians, some believers, some spiritual leaders, sadly, are saying to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I want you to move just enough to bless me but not enough to challenge me. I want, I want you to do the things that are acceptable to society, but then stop there because we don't want to be embarrassed. Let me tell you something. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for special services and back rooms. The power of the Holy Spirit is not something we should be ashamed of. And it's like we're trying to reinvent things. I mean, tell the people in the book of Acts, you know, you shouldn't have prayed in tongues out in front of the whole city like that. <laughs> Brother David, if you pray in tongues, you're going to turn believers off to the, or unbelievers off to the gospel. The gift of tongues is not what turns people off to the gospel. Jesus told us what does. He said, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world and some reject the light. Why? Because they love the darkness. It has nothing to do with our, our speaking in tongues. I don't mind embracing being a little bit strange. You know, I I could have a much, as they would say it, and I don't look at it in these terms, I could have a much, quote, larger ministry, end quote, if I just stopped doing some of the things that the Holy Spirit wants to do in the service. I just pulled back, didn't pray for the sick, didn't cast out devils, didn't let the power of the Holy Spirit flow, maybe apologized a little more for some of the manifestations that we see in here. I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed of the power of the Holy Ghost. I am not ashamed of the power of the Holy Ghost. You can call me strange. That's okay with me. And they may call you strange. Oh, the way you speak in tongues. How odd. Yeah, but there's power when we pray in tongues. Oh, oh, you know, I, I don't know if I quite agree with the way you drive out demons. It looks so intense. Well, yeah, it's a demonic manifestation. But you know, those people end up going free. Or we say things like, well, I don't know if I I want you to be so harsh on those truths that you speak. And they call you a bigot and they call you strange and they call you weird and they try to push you out of society. But wait until they need a miracle. Guess who they're going to call? Wait until somebody needs a healing. And then suddenly they're calling the strange aunt or the strange sister or the strange brother. Oh, things are fine. We, we, We don't need your strangeness right now. But as soon as something detrimental happens for which we have no answers, they're going to call on you and you're going to call on the Holy Ghost. I'm all for systems and structure. I love systems and structure. In fact, God loves systems and structure. I mean, people say things all the time. Very immature. I don't want to be a part of organized religion. Would you want to, you want to be a part of chaotic religion? Is that what you're telling me? 
disorderly religion? Is that what you mean? And really, it's a generational issue. We don't like structure because structure means power and authority. And the moment you ta start talking about power and authority, well, a generation that's rebellious isn't going to want anything to do with that. And it's not the structure they have an issue with. It's the accountability. And so we understand that structure is a part of ministry. In fact, that's the gift of administration. God is a God of order. Let all things be done decently in order. Name me one thing God ever did that was disorganized. The church is no different. So I understand there are systems. There are spiritual leaders. There are different roles we all play. There are different systems we must implement. I mean, you're sitting here in a service, many of you, because we have systems in place that alert the people when the meetings are happening. We have things in place for running sound checks and making sure our camera crew gets here. You should see how our camera crew travels. They have to take all these pieces of equipment everywhere they go. I mean, boxes and boxes. No airline likes us. We get the, they, these poor guys get strange looks in the airport. Like, they just tons that you, you would be amazed. Like, a van has to pull up and they unload their bags on, and get it ready for the airplane. So I believe in systems. But, but these systems are not to replace the spirit. They're to set the atmosphere. You know, we, 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 many times in, in churches, I, sadly, we have altars but no fire. And, and we'll, set, we'll set the place just enough. This looks nice, but God's not sending fire down. Well, isn't that what he told the Levites? Keep the fire burning. He didn't tell them to start it. Why? Because they couldn't. Not the kind he wanted. That's why Nadab and Abihu were, were consumed. Because they burned strange fire, meaning they had man-made fire at the altar when God was the one who was supposed to send it. And here's the problem. Sometimes believers go years in self-reliance, and here's the scary thing. Were the Holy Spirit to stop moving in their churches, many of them wouldn't even know it. Thank God this meeting is the opposite, but it also means we have to have faith. I don't know what miracles he's going to perform tonight. But there's a whole portion of the service dedicated to testimonies. I'm, I'm trusting he's going to heal some people tonight. And, 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 if, and if he doesn't, which he will, but hypothetically speaking, if he weren't to do that, we would know it. And I'm simply saying to you in our lives and ministries, we must learn to depend upon and involve him. Number three. Number one is awareness. Number two is dependency. Are you receiving this tonight, church? Yeah. Number three is obedience. Ephesians 4.30 tells us don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Oh, when I learned that the Holy Spirit has feelings. You see, I don't live holy for fear of some punishment. Yes, sin has consequences. Again, do not hear what I'm not saying. Sin has consequences. Yes, even in the New Testament sense. Just ask Ananias and Sapphira. But you know, if you live in fear of punishment, you're driven by fear, not love. True holiness, true power comes when you begin to live a life aware of that precious Holy Spirit, knowing not I'm afraid of some punishment, but I don't want to hurt him. People brag about their ability to hear the Holy Spirit. Oh, I can hear him. I'm very sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He speaks to me all the time. Do you listen? Who cares how often you hear him? How often do you respond when he speaks? And then we talk about it so casually. Well, you know, God's really been dealing with me for the past few weeks about doing this. Uh, he's just dealing with me. So basically, you're admitting God told me what to do weeks ago, and I've chosen to live in disobedience the past few weeks. And then we want to try to pray away the mental anguish that comes from disobeying the Holy Spirit instead of just obeying. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What are you doing with his hands? 
What are you doing with his eyes, his ears, his being? Are you taking him places he doesn't want to go? Are you using his mouth to have conversations he'd rather not have? This is why the Christian who is struggling with the flesh is, is, is among the most miserable in the world. Because there's that turmoil of living in the flesh and knowing that the spirit is grieved within them. God, help us to not just respond when you speak, but to respond immediately. I don't want to grieve him. That precious spirit of God, so patient with us, so kind, so ready to forgive. He's waiting for us to surrender. He's waiting for us to let go of those things in our lives that we think we need. How many, as I'm talking, you can sense the Holy Ghost speaking to you? Let me see your hand. See, he's speaking some things right now. Lift your hands, pray in the Holy Spirit. Just a moment, just a moment. You online too. Ishmael, just play. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Keep praying, church, keep praying. Pray, 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 pray. You online, pray, pray, pray right now. Jesus, we love you. You say, I want that friendship with the Holy Spirit. I want you to come stand at this altar right now. Don't wait for others to come. Don't look around to see who's there. You're you're standing up in this place now. And you're saying, I want to have this friendship with the Holy Spirit. Come to the front. Begin praying out loud in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pray, 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 pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Make room, make room all the way down, all the way down. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we honor you. I want you to lift your hands all across this room now and you watching online praying too. I know tonight I was more sharing than teaching or preaching. But what I shared with you is something very simple. Simple, 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 simple. Friendship, closeness. He's near, he's here, he's within you. Ask him. Ask him for that fresh touch. Many of you right now are going to have an encounter in the presence of the Holy Ghost that's going to absolutely transform your life. You want that? Pray out loud, loudly and boldly now. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we bless your name. The fire of the Holy Ghost move through your people, Lord. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring her here. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. 
That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Keep praying, church. Keep praying.
touch everyone, Lord, who's receiving this now. And touch those online, Lord. Touch those online receiving this. Pick him up, please. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands, brother. In the name of Jesus, total liberty. Something has shifted here tonight. It's beautiful. So Holy Spirit, let the sweetness of your presence manifest in the room now. Wow. I'm just going to obey the Holy Spirit here. Some of you are beginning to see heavenly visions right now. Some are seeing visions. Others, others are beginning to, to smell like a beautiful fragrance fill the room. It's like a sweet smelling fragrance. Wow. And there's like a burning in your heart, like you feel it in, in, in the middle of your body, like a burning. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit being manifested here among us. Lord, let them sense your presence like never before. Like never before. Wow. This woman in the white here, just she can stay right there. They just touched you on the shoulders. They're touching you on the shoulders now, ma'am. The Lord says, I'm taking care of it. I'm taking care of it. There, there's, there's something you're praying, and it's just deeply grieving to you. The Lord says, I'm, I'm taking care of it. I'm taking care of it. I'm taking care of it. Receive it. Receive it. Jesus. <laughs> I love the Holy Spirit. I'll do it, Lord. Father, I pray for every cynic and skeptic and critic and cessationist watching this broadcast right now. Come on, stretch your hands toward the camera, begin to pray. Precious Holy Spirit, come upon their children in the mighty name of Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, begin to visit their family members and their loved ones. I pray, Lord, that they would begin to know your power. I thank you, Lord, that even as they watch this, even if they watch it to criticize, that this very anointing is flowing right now from this room, through that camera, right through their screen. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit begins to do a work like never before. Pray, 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 pray. Lord, we bless the critic in the name of Jesus. We bless the skeptics in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're going to begin to cause cessationists to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing those who criticize your ministry. I thank you, Lord, that their children will come to know the power of the Holy Ghost. We honor and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I Listen, listen. I never talk to critics, ever. It's just something I don't do. That might be hyperbole, but like 99.99%. But the Holy Spirit right now told me to pray for them. I don't curse you. I bless you. I don't hate you. I love you. I love you. And here's the thing. Do you know how God used the nation to bring salvation through to touch the Gentiles? The scripture talks about this. How... The way the nation of Israel rejected the Savior, it made room for God to graft in others. In the same way, those of you who criticize this work, it's not mine, it's the Holy Spirit's. Your children will experience the goodness of the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. And there are some watching even now who are watching 
with a skeptical eye, with a cynical eye. You've got no choice. The power's here. Father, I pray that this same spirit that's on me and on these precious people would begin to move in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. There was like a, a moment ago, like a wave that came across the room. How many felt like that, that power here? Beautiful, beautiful presence of the Lord. Do me a favor. Go back to your seat just for a couple of minutes, please. Just for a couple of minutes. I need to talk to you. And then we're going to minister to those who are sick. And you watching online, I want to hear some testimonies. As the power of the Holy Ghost is also, I know, moving in your homes. Thank you, Jesus. Help this gentleman up too here. What's your name, sir? That's the power of God all over him. What's your name? Can we get another usher up here to help out, Sergio? He, he's, just, he's just under this heavy weight. Pick him up. I want to talk to him. What's your name? Daniel. You've been asking the Lord to use you. And even as you sat there on that front row, you, you were hungry for the power of God in your life. And even as I talked about how the ministry grew over the years, you were inspired. You were inspired. There was something in you saying, Lord, do it with me. Lord, do it with me. But there's something else you want. Everyone pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say this part off mic. You watching online, I'm going to say something privately to this man. You can film it, Tim, but I don't want any audio. That was, that was, gentlemen, let, let's leave the microphones on, uh, please. That, that was one of the deepest cries of your heart that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. God spoke to him right now, and some things are so private, you don't say them on the microphone. But there was something else he was asking from the Lord, and the Holy Spirit told me to say that as you begin to surrender, it will be granted. You will receive according to the portion of your faith. And from that, from that, from that, will come miracles. But more important than the miracles, more important than the manifestations of power, you will carry the presence and the glory of God on your very being. You will carry that presence and glory. Now, I don't want to take too long with this, but it's, it's a very important part of the service. This is our chance to participate in what the Lord is doing. I'm going to take an offering right now, and this is for those of you who are here and those of you who are watching online. Everything that we do as a ministry, we do free of charge. And the reason for this is that we don't want to have any barriers between people and receiving from the Lord or from the Word. So we cover the full cost of all events, even, uh, even by faith. And sometimes we don't know what's going to come in. Sometimes people sponsor ahead of time. Sometimes we just go in and we let the Lord speak to the people. But, you know, we had to switch to this bigger venue because the other one was just, it was, it was not happening there. It was, it was a great venue. The, the kindest, most wonderful people in the world, that was Elevation Church in Orange, California. Great friend of mine, Pastor Adam Friedrich, he made that available to us for as long as we were able to use it. So there was no issues with us or the church or the ministry. Or they were great people, and they treated us with honor and kindness. But the building just couldn't hold the people anymore. And so we switched to this one, which, as you can see, is much larger. And we have people still in the lobby here. So this is growing, and this is growing much faster than even we anticipated. Look, I have faith, but the Lord likes to outdo us, okay? He says, okay, you believe for this? I'll give you that. And he goes one step above, I think, each time, each time. It's usually a very big step. But look, to do these events, it's getting more and more expensive. You would be shocked at how much these things cost. You may think, oh, you know, David and a microphone and some people play some music. There is so much that goes into this, you wouldn't believe it. But it's not just the events. The videos that you see, the live streams that you're a part of, these services that we do around the world, 
they're only going to get larger and they're only going to become more frequent. And so I need your help and I need your help, those of you watching online. We need help with the support of the ministry. I know that God will provide. I know that this is God's ministry. The way he provides is through speaking to people like you. And I need everyone to hear from the Holy Spirit and allow the Lord to generously move you to give. I don't even know how much this one costs. Reuben, how much? So this one service tonight costs 40000 You say, where does all that go? Well, you have to rent the building. You have to fly out all the camera equipment. By the way, those of you watching online, we add another 20000 on top of it because the camera crew, the director, the equipment, the sound team, the sound, all of it has to travel with us if you want this experience, if you want to be a part of it. So that's why we ask those online giving too because we wouldn't be able to broadcast without your support as well. So this one service costs 40000 Imagine those larger ones that we do at the conference centers when we travel. Those get very expensive, and I, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to charge people to come hear the gospel. Not going to happen. I would rather go broke than charge people to hear the gospel. But the truth is, we, in order to continue doing this, you're going to have to jump in with us. Everyone's got to do their part. Look, we've been praying for revival in California. It's happening. You see this month after month. These services are filling up. Miracles are happening. People are being saved, delivered. It's happening. So now let's get behind it because it's only up from here. It's only larger services from here, and that means more lives transformed. So I'm asking you as my brothers and sisters who believe in the work of God through this ministry, and you watching online too, I'm asking you to give toward this ministry your very, most generous, your very best, most generous gift that you possibly can. And if everybody does that, everybody here and everybody watching right now does their absolute best, I truly believe we're not only going to meet the need of that 40000 I believe we'll go over it and even pay for a little bit of the next time we come. And we want to come back in November. We do. We want to come back in November and do this again. So we need your help. We need you to get involved. Um, and we're going to have the ushers now begin to pass that offering envelope uh, all around the room. They're going to give a stack to one group and then have you pass it down. You watching online? You can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. There you can give your gift. You can give a one-time gift. You can give a monthly gift. Uh, you can do both if God so leads you to do so. Any gift, large or small, is going to help us continue to do this work. You're seeing the media make impact. You're seeing the live streams make impact. You're seeing the events make impact. This is where it counts now. If we're going to keep doing this, we need your help. So that's the need. This service costs us 40000 If you want the breakdown, ask Reuben. He'll give it to you. He has it line by line. You'd be amazed. How many people travel with us? Do you know off the top of your head? So about imagine flying a team of 20. That's hotels. And then, guys, the Bible says those who, who, those who preach the gospel ought to live by the gospel. So a lot of these people are on staff with our ministry and some of them are not, meaning we got to pay for them to do what they do. We hire camera operators, worship team members, and so forth. And then you got to feed everybody. And then, as I said, you got to put them all in hotels. And then you got to pay for the venue. Then you got to fly the equipment. Steve and I and the, 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 the board, we don't make anything off of this. This is just, we, we, we just do this out of the love for God that we have and for you. This all goes to fund the event. And like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Because I want to minister to those who need healing, deliverance, and so forth. But let's do this because it is important. I'm not rushing it because it's not important. I just think that you hear from God and give what he tells you, and we can move on from there. Are you watching online? Um, also, again, you can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Your support helps us. If you want us to continue to live stream these events, please continue to support them. It's the only way we're able to, especially... Uh, the way we live stream it, the way we like to live stream it, it's like you're actually here, the cameras and everything, um, uh, providing all those different angles so that you're involved with it. We don't want to just set up a camera in the back. It's very hard to hear sometimes and so forth, um, but we do want to do things with excellence. So those of you who are giving online, I can see it. Those of you who give at davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. I want to thank Andre and Manny and Benjamin and Stephen for becoming monthly partners. Thank you, Betty. Thank you also to Ali. And let me see here. We have John. God bless you. Bruce, thank you. Many of your gifts coming in from all over. It's refreshing now. Thank you so much for your support. 
Those of you giving online, again, it's davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. And I'll see them as they come in, as the internet signal provides that for me. Um, they're walking around now with pens if anybody needs them. I would actually recommend if you're giving here in person that you give using the QR code or just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. It's faster. Um, but if you want to write in the envelope, that's fine too. Make sure it's legible and clear. Fill out your name, your address, email, and so forth so that we can contact you if we need to uh, for any updates about the ministry that you're supporting. Uh, but I just want to thank you. I want to take this time to thank all of you who are supporting this ministry. I know that you're giving out of the kindness of your heart, out of generosity, out of your love for the ministry, out of your love for souls, most importantly, your love for Jesus. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you on behalf of the ministry. It's because of your partnership that we're able to continue to do this. I need you. You may think, Brother David, I need you to teach me sometimes. I believe that we do need teachers, but you know I also need you. We need each other if we're going to make a real impact in the kingdom of God. And we have to acknowledge our need of each other. God gives yes to the church, the gifts of the evangelist and the teacher and so forth, but God also gives supporters to ministries as a gift. All of us together are impacting the nations of the world. All of us together are making that difference. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired about the agenda that the enemy is throwing against not just this generation, but even your children. I mean, look at some of the things, some of the filth they're putting in their cartoons and TV shows. I'll tell you this, the enemy is working hard to win the soul of the next generation. We should be working harder. And we have the power of the Holy Ghost on our side. We have a message they need to hear. And so let's be generous so that we can continue to support the gospel. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to pray in just a moment, and we're going to ask the Lord to bless you for your giving. I know we don't give to get, but that's, that's something I'm going to pray anyway, uh, because I believe that's part of it, part of, the, part of the giving principles that we see in Scripture is that the Lord does indeed increase resources when we're good stewards of it. So let's get behind this. And now I'm just checking to see if everybody's done filling out the envelope. Does anybody need a little more time to fill that out? Okay, good. We're just about there. Do me a favor. And you watching online too, I want you to pray with us. Everyone here who's given, I want you to hold up your envelope. If you gave online, hold up your hand. And those of you watching online, I want you to receive this prayer too. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would bless your people. I pray, Lord, that you would increase their resources, that they might become one who funds the kingdom. Father, but this is our most important prayer now. We are asking that you use the support that we're giving to you tonight, that you would use that for the sake of souls. Father, let our resources be like a weapon in your hand. And Father, we pray that as the light goes forward, that darkness would be dissolved. We claim and we thank you in advance for the soul of a generation. Thank you, Lord, that the nations of the world belong to you. Thank you, Lord, that our children belong to you. Thank you, Lord, that these generations belong to you. And we pray you bless this work that we might be effective unto the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, amen. amen. As the buckets go past you, you're, I'm gonna ask you all to stand right now. As the buckets go past you, please uh, place your gift inside. Everyone, please stand. What we're going to do now is we're just going to worship the Lord. You know, the move of the Holy Spirit is like a river. And in that river, there are certain streams. As we worship, we get caught up in a stream. And sometimes that stream is healing. Sometimes that stream is deliverance. Sometimes it's the prophetic. I mean, there's always a little bit of everything. But we're going to just flow with the Spirit now. Lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, take me where you want me to go. Now, I want you to forget about all your troubles. I want you to forget about why you came in here, what miracle you're believing for. You online as well. I even want you to forget for a moment that you're in this service. Forget about what time it is. Forget about what tomorrow holds. Everything now needs to be turned toward him. Hands lifted, eyes closed, 
I want you to begin to pray loudly and boldly in the Holy Spirit. Come on. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. Lifted eyes closed, church. I came to worship you. I came to sing your praise. I came to love.
Lift your voices and sing at church. is with the angels now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Don't forget he's looking at you as you sing. happening here church something's shifting here just continue now to focus on him many of you are beginning to sense that weight of glory descend upon this room but don't focus on what you're feeling focus on him and as we sing this song to him, I want you to be aware of the fact that he is listening to you sing it to him. You have his full attention. Let this be a song that you sing out of the depths of your spirit. Simple words. Lift your voices now and your hands to him. I love you. I love you. I 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I love you. It's not a fight for the Holy Spirit. I love you. It's not a fight for the Holy Spirit. Tell him, church. I love you. I love you. I love you, my Lord. Where the light of the Spirit is, no darkness can dwell. I'm telling you right now, many were set free from demonic power just a moment ago. You heard it happening all over the room. We thank you, Lord. Where your Spirit is, there is liberty. And now, I want you to once again repurpose your focus. Look to Jesus again. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. The victorious one. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Alpha and Omega. This is the glory. This is the glory of God. That glory changes the atmosphere. That glory drives out demonic power. That glory drives out sickness. You're standing in the presence of Almighty God. Lift your hands, begin praying out loud again in the Holy Spirit now. We're ascending, we're ascending, we're ascending. Higher places, higher places, higher places. Higher places. You watching online, higher places. Thank you, Lord. Steve, please sing the song, Glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the
Just a whisper now, please. Softly, softly, softly. This is the glory of God. He's taking you to higher places. That mighty river of his spirit is flowing. Father, let us drink from that fountain that never runs dry. That springs of living water flow from deep within. There's such a beauty of his presence here. Such a heavy glory. There's such a heavy glory here tonight. Onto robo bo sent it yet. Kondo robo sent it yet. Robo bo kent it. And there ye be santo robo bo sent. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, we surrender to that which you want to do tonight. I 
I sense it now. Father, I by faith now step into that mantle that you've placed on my life. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're now touching your people. And we promise to give you the glory for everything you're doing now. Father, with your holy fire, consume us. Burn away everything that displeases you, I pray. Burn away everything that is not of you. We surrender ourselves. Lift your hands and tell them you surrender again. Surrender those things that ought not to be there. Oh, fire of the Holy Ghost, consume us. It's the wind of the Spirit blowing across this room now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Present to heal.
lift your voices now. you to do is place your hand on the part of your body that's sick and in need of healing. Place your hand on the part of your body that's sick and in need of healing now. The power is present to heal, church. I think that's quite evident. And as we pray, I want you to receive your miracle. Father, thank you that Jesus is Lord. Thank you that he's been given a name high above every other name. And I, by faith now, stretch my hands toward that one believing for their miracle, and I pray, Lord, that your power would begin to flow through their body. Some of you right now are beginning to feel like a heat come on you. Others, you're feeling like an electricity. Some might be feeling like a weight. And more recently in our meetings, people have been feeling like streams of water moving across them. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's his power working in you. Now, Father, I thank you that that sickness is going. I rebuke blood disorder in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you have to go now. Cancer, you have to go now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, we break your power. I command paralysis to be healed. We pray that those nerves would be restored right now in the name of Jesus. That numbness, that immobility, we rebuke it now. Father, begin to restore paralyzed legs and hands. And, and begin to restore feeling and movement right now. Deaf ears, be open right now. I said right now. Deaf ears, be open. Blind eyes, be open in the name of Jesus. Skin disorder, clear up right now. You have to go. You have to go. Drug addiction, be broken in the name of Jesus. We break the power of drug addiction. That is broken right now in the name of Almighty God. Lord, we rebuke even those sicknesses that are of the mind. I rebuke depression. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke OCD. I rebuke panic disorder. Lord, we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Healing, healing, healing is yours. Healing is yours, church. Lord, heal knees, heal shoulders, heal backs, heal legs. Miracles of all kinds are happening all across this room now as we pray. Miracles of all kinds are happening even online as you watch. Now what I want you to do, by faith, here's where your faith comes into action. I want you to begin to test your body now for the miracle. Start moving right now. Find the pain. Look for the tumor. Check your eyes, check your ears, check your skin. We've had this happen so many times where somebody comes in, they've had like psoriasis or skin disorder for years, and then they don't realize till after they get home and take off their jacket that the skin underneath the jacket was completely healed. Things like that happen. Uh, last month, a woman who was paralyzed, many of you saw, how many of you saw that woman walk? She, 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 she's been, she hadn't been able to walk for, I don't even know how long. Miracles like that have been happening. Now test yourself, test yourself, test yourself. How many of you believe you've been healed? Wave at me like this. Look all across the room at all these healings, church. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for this? Now here's what I want to do. If you've been healed, I want you to do your part now. Remember how Jesus sent the lepers away and only a couple came back to testify of their miracle? Don't be those lepers who didn't come back. If the Lord has healed you, that's not just for you. He wants to share that with others. 
And your story may inspire the faith in someone else to receive their healing. So if you receive the healing tonight, you believe you've been healed, I want you to come out of your seat, whether you think it's a little miracle or too big to believe. Come out of your seat and come stand right over where Britain over here is waving at you. Come on now. Come out of the aisle, out of your seat. You online, I want you in the comment section to be te begin telling us what it is that the Lord did for you. Testify of your miracle online as well. And those of you who are here who believe you've been healed, come out of your seat. There's many of them coming now. Help the mushers. They're all in the aisles here and there. And help them come find this section over here. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand of praise for that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Don't you just sense the liveliness in these services? There's like an electricity on the atmosphere. I can't, I can't explain it any other way other than there's like an electricity on the atmosphere. And I'm checking in now with the online people. I'm seeing the many comments coming in. They are watching from all over the world right now. Donna says, he has healed me. Cecilia says, I am healed of a gastric ulcer, no more pain. Elsa says, I believe I'm being healed. Watch this now. Karina said her scalp psoriasis has been healed. That's, that's incredible. I love this one. Precious says they've been healed from tooth pain. Now, you can give, yeah, give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Here's why I love it. Here's why I love it. Because from the outside looking in, that seems like a small thing, doesn't it? But doesn't the scripture say he delights in every detail of our lives? And so to us, it may be, oh, that's a cool testimony. Someone's toothache was healed. But to that person, I'm sure it, was, it made all the difference in the world. Um, I also see, um, wow, okay, someone is commenting here. They're commenting in several comments, so I want to make sure I want to get this correct. Okay, someone said, and all caps here, God has healed me of my sciatica that I've had for over a year. All caps and exclamation point. <laughs> You're going to love this. And then they left a follow-up. They left a really long, wow, I couldn't even touch my toes. And now the Lord has healed them. Wow, this is amazing. Let me see what else. God set me free from anxiety and depression. I've been healed of chest pain. All my aches and pains, gone. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just looking. I, 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 they're coming in so fast I can't even keep up with them. That's the God we serve. That's our precious Jesus. What happened here, Reuben? Gentlemen, let's get these microphones on so that we can hear what Reuben is saying. Diga, I have Jackie here. Jackie here was in a car accident 18 years ago. She got hit by a drunk driver. Ever since then, she's had neck pain for 18 years, constant pain. Chiropractic years. work couldn't fix it. Taking Advil almost every day won't fix it. She said earlier today in service that she was praying, laying hands on her neck. She said she felt instant relief, and she said she now has full mobility. Show us. That is awesome. Excuse me? I'm, what were you saying? I'm just grateful to God. I really believe in healing and the power of God. And if you have faith, he can do it. He, all things is possible. And for 18 years, you suffered with this. How bad was that pain? It was very bad because um, the drunk driver hit, um, hit my car with my son and my neck, and it was total, and I had a bulge, and I didn't have to go surgery. I just live in pain for all these years and just limited movement. It triggers my migraine. And tonight when you said touch your neck or... or, or touch anywhere you hurt and the Holy Spirit just let me touch my neck because it's been bothering me and I just prayed and prayed and prayed and when you said try it and test it and I can I can turn now it was very limited can we give the Lord a hand of praise for this this is awesome now can I ask you what did you feel come on you when you were praying for your neck? Did you feel God's power? Yes. What was that like? It was warm. It was tingling. It was like electricity. It's here now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, please hear me. I didn't interrupt her to be fancy. I, 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 like, it wasn't like just like, a, that's, not being, that's not a show, okay? 
I felt the power of God come on me as she was talking about it. And I have to move right when I sense it. So that's not for show to interrupt her while she's talking. So don't, 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 we don't play with the power of the Holy Spirit. You can enjoy it. It can be exciting, but you have to be reverent to how he leads you to do it. And as she was talking, I sensed it like a, like a wave come across my body. And that's when I prayed over her because that was the moment to lay hands. I know it's time to lay hands on people when I start feeling like currents move through my hands. And so that's what I felt right now. And that's why she's on the floor. For those of you wondering, this is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power. You know, there are miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, they solve problems that no one else can solve but God. Signs are God's way of pointing us back to him, bringing our attention to something about which we should be aware. And wonders just make you wonder. And so that's what's happening here. It's a wonder. May I ask what you felt right now? Floating. <laughs> like, it's all over you. Can you see that all over her? <laughs> like, kind of, yeah, just floating. You can float back to your seat. God bless you. What happened here, Sergio? Diga, this is Juan. For the last two years, she's dealt with pain in the knees. He had blood clots. He even came with pain today. And he said, the moment you started praying, Hold on, wait, wait, wait. He's getting so excited, his mic is shutting off. What, what happened? He said he came in with pain. He had blood clots, even had surgery three months ago, still dealt with pain. He said, but the moment you started praying, he said, I felt fire come upon me and begin to move his legs, and the pain is completely gone. He says, he says, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. I don't know about you, but I love seeing what Jesus does. This is what he does. It's his work, guys. It's his work. Now, you are just in a whole different place. I can see it all over you. It's, you know, when people are under this, it's almost like a dreamlike feeling. But this is real. It's happening, okay? Now, let me ask you, how bad was the pain? Oh, like, probably, like, way past the 10. And how long did you have that again? Almost, like, three years, two years. Like, I can't remember. But. What did you try to do to fix it? Uh, I had surgeries. I went with doctors. And, uh, yeah, they did a surgery, but the pain was still there. And tonight, what did Jesus do? He healed me. <laughs> he healed me. He's a healer. Say that one more time. He's a healer. He's a healer. Not just for me, but for everyone. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, anoint him for ministry in Jesus' name. Lord, anoint this man for ministry. Let him preach the gospel to the nations of the world. And the church said... I don't know about you, but I think we need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. It doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. What happened, Britton? David, this is Angie. She's been having allergies in her eyes that affect her vision. And a few months ago, she got in a bike accident and she injured her knee. She was feeling like she should leave the service because she couldn't see. And the Lord told her to wait on a little bit longer. And during the prayer, she said that her eyes cleared up and she left the wrap that was on her knee in her seat. <laughs> So your eyes cleared up? Yeah, I can see better, much better. Take off the glasses for a second. How's that? Yeah, I can still see. <laughs> she said, yeah, I can still see. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor. Oh, well, don't, don't fall off the stage there. Come here, bring her here. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. It's like, um, it's different manifestations for different people. And, you know, she's getting it real intense right now. This is like the electricity I felt when I was 14. And, and people can look at something like this sometimes, and they say, oh, well, maybe a little exaggerated. So in some cases, yes, but, but it's a very real phenomenon. And it's, 
it's a beautiful experience. From the outside looking in, it's easy to criticize. Like I've heard people say, God is a God of disorder. And then they point to the slain in the spirit phenomenon as if it's somehow disorderly. It's different, but it's not disorderly. And then you have to ask the question, well, whose order do you mean? Do you mean man's order? Because sometimes God's order is different than our order. And when God's order is different than our order, it's easy for us in the flesh to label what God is doing as disorder. But that's the undiscerning eye. That's the undiscerning spirit. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's a beautiful thing. And we need to be thankful for that moving in our midst. We need to be thankful for that moving in our midst. I want to ask her something here. Can you describe, if possible, I know it's like, can you describe what you're feeling? A wave of electricity go through my body up and down. At every three minutes, I, I, the wave is strengthened, and then it disappear, and then it come back, and it disappear. That's a fire of God going through my whole entire body, from head to toe, burning everything and cleansing everything. Guys, this is the real deal up here tonight. It's the real deal. What happened, Rob? Diga, Diga, I have Linda here. Two years now has had terrible mouth pain. She said it's actually affected by her nervous system. She said the doctor told her she would have to get her mouth reconstructed surgery because the pain is that intense and that's the only way they can fix it. She said today in service, she laid hands on her jaw and her mouth. And what happened? And she said the pain went away. She began to test it and she said it's completely gone now. Sound guys, you're gonna have to remove the noise gate. Just let the sound be what it is. And what, what, what happened when the Lord touched you? I came and I was worshiping the Lord and I had pain in my whole entire mouth. I've been living with this pain for two years and I was silently asking the Lord, just heal me, heal me Lord, because I need full mouth reconstruction of my teeth. And as I was praying, I was just watching you, and I was like, use them, Lord, just use them. And I started feeling cotton inside my mouth. I still feel it right now. It's like if something is full in there. I can't even talk to you like I normally do. It's weird. And the paint went away. It went away. You said you felt like cotton? It's almost like the Lord performed the surgery himself. Church, we are seeing some incredible miracles here tonight. Wow. Reverently now, Sergio. What happened? Tiga, this is Su Susie for the five years. Oh, hold on. Just don't worry about it. You tell me. I've had arthritis really bad in my hands, and I was actually praying for my depression and my broken heart, and my hands felt like they were on fire, and I couldn't close them all the way, and there's no pain. None. It's gone. I see the touch of God on you, restoring your mind. Lord, let her know your love in greater depths than ever before. She can go that way, gentlemen. 
There's a deep work being done in this woman. I'm telling you, sometimes the Holy Spirit reveals very personal things. That's a deep work. Oh, wow. I can, he's standing right next to me. I can feel him. I can feel him. Oh, wow. Reverently, please. David, this is Patricia. For over 20 years, she's been dealing with weakness and involuntary movements. The doctors couldn't find the source of it. She came last month, left the service, and she didn't realize that she's been healed and it's, the symptoms have been leaving. I don't know why he's showing me that, but you, you know why you're saying yes, but I'll tell you this right now. Pray in the Holy Spirit again. It's, 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 hmm. I saw like, Obviously, I don't want to say that on the mic, but, but that's what I'm saying. And so that's what you need to pray for. And, and that, and, and, and identify that, and then I see there being peace coming back on that situation. Keep praying in the Holy Spirit, church. What happened here, Reuben? Diga, I have Isabella here who has had eye irritation for a month now in her right eye. She said, for the past month, it's hurt just to look in certain directions, blink. She said, it's just hurt to do normal things like that. She said, today in service, she just randomly noticed the pain was gone. She said, there's no more irritation in her. Stay with me. Who's, who's, are, are your parents here? Who's here with you? Bring your mom, your dad, and your brother. I want the mom, the dad, the brother up here, please. And then I think we're, we'll get one more testimony, and then I'm done, gentlemen. You want God's power on you. Get down here quickly, 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 quickly. The service is shifting here. Let that family up, though. And so, Mom, can you explain what was wrong with her eye? Uh, she, we were having dinner before we got here, and she was rubbing, like, really bad and heavy. I noticed it more than usual.
Keep praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep praying in the Holy Spirit. I apologize to everyone here on the online. I'm just not going to do it on the mic. It's not about entertainment, but edification. And I need to, to minister personally just for a moment. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Would you stretch your hands toward this family? Father, protect this family. Protect this family. Whoa. Protect this family. What's your name, my friend? Pardon? Lord? Protect Ezekiel. Protect his mind from the things of this world. Father, I pray that you would begin to speak to him. Show him, Lord. Show him, Lord. Now the rest of you, lift your hands and pray out loud. It's fire. It's just fire. Some of you are feeling the power of God in a way you've never sensed that power before. And that's because it's the moment God has for you to encounter him in a way that's going to transform your life. Bring her up here for a second, please. Britton, what happened here? David, this is Cookie. Ten years ago, she got in a bad work, and it caused injuries in her knees. For five years, she's, it's gotten more serious to the point where it was bone on bone. She's scheduled to have a knee surgery, and now she doesn't need her cane to walk. to know the story here you said it was almost bone on bone or it was it's, it's bone on bone both knees and how long have you had that pain it started five years ago and i'm supposed to have knee surgery and i just i just had i just kept putting it off and just praying and dealing with the pain but i never really prayed for healing but 
to date. I came. I, I also came for restoration for my family and to be jumping into the holy fire for God to use me for his testimony. I got healed. And now you can go back and they can see you and you can say, look what the Lord has done. This is what Jesus does, church. Now, now come with me for a second. I'm going to test this out here. I'm looking at her legs to kind of see like, you know, any, any hobbling things. She, she, I'm telling you, she is walking perfectly fine. This is beautiful. You, you got to tell me, are you shocked or were you expecting this? I came, like I said, I came for restoration for my family and for the holy flame to take over me so, so I can be a living testimony for my father, God, and the Holy Spirit. And then he healed you. He healed me. I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally blown away. Totally blown away. Didn't, I didn't come for this. Like I said, I came, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? saying thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Father God wow well you go rejoicing hold that cane up nice and high as you walk over there bring her here holy 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 are you Lord thank you Jesus this power's here guys I need you all stay on the platform with me now and be attentive as the Holy Spirit leads. If you want it, ask him. I am not your source, it's the Lord. I'm just a point of contact. But you have to ask him. of the Lord. Keep praying, keep praying. You know, I want to make a point. I want to point something out. How many of you heard of those demonic manifestations during that one point in worship? Just wave at me. Did you see how the power of the Holy Ghost was like a mighty force driving those things out. You witnessed like four or five deliverances within a minute. Please remember, ministers of the gospel, that is the way Jesus did it. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and the Holy Spirit just wanted me to draw attention to his power. And something the Holy Spirit has been asking me to remind the church of is that yes, there are demonic powers who have power, but he wants me to remind you that there is no spirit more powerful than the Holy Spirit. He wants me to remind you of that. Can I tell you something else? 
the book of James talks about his jealousy. I could sense the jealousy of the Holy Spirit being stirred sometimes when we give more credit to demons than to him. So the Holy Spirit wanted me to draw that to your attention tonight, that he did it. It wasn't me. It was him. And he did it in his own power, and it was, it was not a fight. He drove him right out. Please remember that. Having said that, now that you're all delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to one more time lift your hands and pray in the Spirit. And what you're doing here is you're just asking him, asking him, touch. Whoa, streams, streams of living water, streams of living water flow through you, brother. Streams of living water. Wow, wow, wow. I see the Lord sending you to the hurting and the helpless, to the hurting and the helpless, to the hurting and the helpless. For he's placed within you the compassion of the Spirit. And you watch, says the Lord, as I use your hands. For they will be my hands. And I will cause the sick to be healed and the bound to go free. It's on your life, brother. Don't forget it. Jesus, we love you and we honor you. Wow. Touch. That's the power of the Spirit. Just receive it, guys. Just receive it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Bring him here, please. Bring him up here. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship oh, you now. Holy, holy, holy. 